Hey yo guys, welcome into Juno Talks Ball. I hope everybody's doing well. Another three points on the board for Manchester United this evening. But before we continue, guys, I would like to just say rest in peace to Sir Bobby Charlton. I never saw him play, but the accolades he has to his name, I'm going to say that he was possibly the best English player to ever play the game. Um, he also has the second most goals for Manchester United, obviously Rooney eclipsing that in his time um and just usually speak to the man i wish i wish i saw him play man i, I honestly wish i saw him play he was he was the last he was the lo one of the he was part of the last generation to win the world cup for england and uh, england haven't been able to do it since then um also before uh 99 uh when manchester united won the the champions league um, so Bobby Charlton before that was also the last group of players to do it. So he 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 was he must have been a great player. I would have loved to see him play. Um, and from what I hear, he had everything to his game, man. But anyway, Manchester United pick up another three points, an important three points. I think the game first twenty minutes was erratic. Um, we were struggling to deal with Sheffield. They were dictating the tempo. Unfortunately, you know, it seems to be a it seems to be a theme with Manchester United games. We um, the first twenty minutes is different to to the rest of the game, um, and I really think it would be nice to see us basically play a full ninety minutes or hundred minutes or ninety five minutes as the games are nowadays with with the amount of extra time. Um, but I do think. I do think you can you can slowly see what Eric Ten Hag is doing. I do think we have a long way to go. I think we have a massively long way to go. So as 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 you could see, um, the first time I really saw it was in the Crystal Palace win in the Carabao Cup, where we we are we our wingers are either or our our right backs and left backs, um, our wing backs are are they they inverting and. Um, well, not all the time, but a lot of the time, like you saw Lindelof in the midfield, um, you saw you saw Deloitte in the midfield, especially uh, for for his goal, he was he was in the middle of the park. He wasn't he wasn't out on his on his wing. He was in the middle of the park, so you either have him pushing down the wing, um, or you or you have them inverting, but you don't have them inverting at the same time. So I, I haven't picked it up yet tactically um, when when they invert. However, um, I'll have to rewatch the game. I think that was a good case study. That game was a brilliant case study to see what Eric Ten Hag has uh, been working on on the training ground. Um, you can finally see his tactics coming through. By the looks of it, he's, he's looking to put, um, especially when the ball is without defense, and it's, there's a lot of long balls, cross-field balls, um, I think it could be because Sheffield was sitting deep, so we're trying to pin him one on one uh, with either Rashford or or Hoyland or Bruno um, or, or or whoever was was playing upfield because there was a lot of times we, um, especially in the first half, Rashford was one on one with with the right back. Um, you saw Maguire giving giving him that ball constantly, and he was holding the line. It's actually. This has been Rashford's best performance of the season. And I don't know if he picked up that confidence from the England game. Hopefully he did. Hopefully he can carry this through. And it's good to see that Rashford had a good game. And still we, we brought on Ganacho. So Ganacho seeing game every game. Which is important for his development. I do think Ganacho was a bit selfish today. I think actually Rashford, he, he had his selfish moments. But he also had his moments where he, um, he was looking up, looking to pass. Um, and he contributed to the goal because he played Bruno uh, for the first for the first goal. As as far as I can remember, Rashford plays Bruno. Bruno Bruno like chips the ball to Scott. Scott uh, chests it, but it's quite high, so he chests it. It's up in the air, and he waits for it to get down, and he kind of waits it into the ground. But it was a good volley, um, and Scott is on the score sheet again. He has three goals in two games. And Scott looked a lot better today. So, the way the game looked was that Amrabat was sitting in the midfield, kind of 
uh, alone a lot of the times. Um, yeah, kind of alone a lot of the times, but Bruno was playing as a 8, and uh, Scott was also playing as a 8. So it was crazy to see Bruno play as a 8. Um, you saw him drop deep, you saw him give long balls. He did lose a few. He also found a few good passes. Hopefully, going forward, um, he, he finds more of his passes. I would... I, th I think it was just the game against Sheffield, trying to get that one-on-one -on -one again. Um, and I do think many people going to be annoyed with Bruno. I, I, do th I do hope, going forward, that we, we build up the play a lot more through the midfield and not the, the long balls over the top. Um, it is crossfield balls. It's not like long through balls. A lot of it was crossfield balls so to our wingers. So I guess that's forgivable. Um, and I do think we're going to see a lot of that going forward. And I do think the Manchester United fans need to get used to that. As long as we're fine in our players, uh, I can live with it. However, we're going to lose the ball. Um, that's going to annoy me. I think Amrabat had a brilliant game. Uh, he's, he's, you see he's dropping into the centre-backs, making it the three at the back, especially when we're, when we're on the attack. I think Amrabat needs to get more on the ball. Because he's the one player that can dictate the play. Um, he doesn't mind having the ball at his feet. He doesn't mind rotating the ball. Um, and I do think he's the pass before the pass. And um, I think he needs to have way more of the ball. Our centre-backs, our centre-backs dealt pretty well with what they had to deal with today. I think Maguire, again, had a good game. Um, and I know he came out recently and he was like, if you look at my win stats this under this manager, um, he, he's not lying. I mean, he hasn't played the greatest teams. Um, he played Brentford, or he started against Brentford, and now he started against um, Sheffield, which isn't the greatest teams. But he can only play against what he has in front of him and oh and crystal palace he started against and when he, oh, one of our best games of the season was was a crystal palace game so i've been saying that maguire <clears throat> at the moment in that center back position is apart from Varane, Varane's Varane's number one on, on the team sheet i think maguire should be his partner um Lindelof actually had a good game today. Lindelof had a good game today. I don't think he was actually that bad. I think he had a decent game. He actually played really well. He tried to get up the field. He worked hard back. Um, and it's good to see, man. It's good to see. I think he, 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 his mistake um, in, the, in the Brentford game, his mistake in the Brentford game went under the radar because of Casemiro's mistake and also... Uh, Unana's mistake, but he also played a big part in, in Manchester United conceding that goal. And I think today he had a very good game. or He had a decent game. Let's not say very good. He had a decent game at left back. And, um, you know, I'm all here for it. I mean, I, I would prefer to see Regulon uh, instead of Lindelof. Um, but I think Lindelof had a decent game. He, he supported Rashford or Ganacho, whoever was playing down that left wing. And he overlapped uh, or underlapped um, when he needed to. So he actually played that position quite well. He, it wasn't too much work for him because, I mean, playing centre-back compared to playing um, left-back or, or right-back is it's two totally different um, games, especially when it comes to energy levels. And he seemed to be doing quite decently. Um, moving to the midfield, Scotty, he scored the goal. He had a, you know, Scott in, in that position where he was playing, he was playing in the 8, but a lot of the time he was high up the field, him and Bruno. Um, we, we weren't getting pinned back, he, he was quite high up the field. And it's not a bad position for him. It's not the worst position for him. He's not a baller, um, but he's going to get you goals. So I do, I do think we're going to see him quite a few times playing in that position. I, I prefer to see him come on maybe um, especially in games that we are struggling but today the way I think I think Tenag planned this game out before before the ball was kicked um, he brought the substitutions on on 60 minutes and the substitutions he brought on was footballers I mean Martial a footballer Ericsson a footballer um, guys that that know how to keep the ball 
So maybe he thought, let's go with a team that's maybe more powerful in the first half. Let's see what Sheffield's going to do. And then in the second half, we'll just grind them down. We'll bring on Ericsson. Um, we'll bring on even even Ganacho. Um, Anthony, Anthony keeps the ball, but I think Ganacho on the left wing, I think he keeps the ball better than Rashford. Although today, Rashford had a good game. I think today, Rashford had the better game of all the wingers, which is crazy for me to say. I don't think I would have been saying that this season. Um, but it's good to see Rashford come to form. He's an important player for Manchester United. And I wasn't against Rashford. I, I wasn't like Salim now. But I think Rashford needed to be benched. But he does seem to be coming to form. Hopefully, he can only go from strength to strength. Um, going forward, I mean, he, he was looking he was looking to pass the ball today. Yes, he had a couple of runs into the box, um, but that's Rashford, man. As long as he's trying to keep the ball, trying to create, um, and I think slowly, 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 Rashford is going to become a better player under Eric Ten Hag. We've seen Eric Ten Hag improve uh, a number of players. Um, I do think the Loita has improved under Eric Ten Hag. I think Wamba Saka has improved under Eric Ten Hag. Um, we, we, I think we're going to see Rashford improve on Eric Ten Hag. And um, who have I not spoken about? Anthony, Anthony taking on his, his, his man today. Um, we saw him running down that, that line. I don't know if Eric Ten Hag had, had a word with him, but a big criticism of Anthony. He didn't do it much, but he done it. So a big criticism of Anthony by myself and by you guys, the Manchester United fans, is that Anthony just, he, he runs up to, to his left back, um, opposing, uh, what's it? Yeah, he's opposing left back, and he just cuts inside and plays the pass. But today we actually saw him run the line a lot more. Um, I think it's a a requirement from Eric Ten Hag, especially the way we we're playing. So we we're playing with like four across the front, with um with maybe like two in the midfield, three at the back. If my numbers are not correct, maybe three in the midfield. And. A lot of the times we were giving that, that cross balls uh, across the field. And it's because of the defensive structure. I think we were trying to catch Brentford out 1v1. So I, I think it was instruction from Eric Ten Hag that he needs to be taking his, his, his winger or, or, or whoever's defending that side on. And it's good to see, man. It's good to see. I, I, I hope Anthony can come, right? Uh, he's a Manchester United player. We, we spent a lot of money on him. And I, I hope he can come, right? I do think he needs to be providing more for Hoyland though. I think him and Rashford need to be providing more for Hoyland. Hoyland had a... He had a difficult game uh, because he's just not getting service. He's not getting enough service. I, I would love to see Hoyland get way more service than he's getting. Um, I think he's a brilliant striker. I think whenever he's on the field, I think he's one of our better players. But he's, he's just having a graveyard shift. So... I do think Eric Ten Hag needs to get that right. I think he needs to work with the team in order to get the striker way more in the game. I mean, it's good to see goals coming from everywhere. We saw goals come from Deloitte today, who I think actually, because of the goal, I, you know, I was watching the game, and um, after the game, I was thinking, who's my man of the match? It's, it's so difficult to pick a man of the match today. And Deloitte with that goal, I think he, he had a decent game. He had a decent game. Um, and that goal was brilliant, man. That goal was absolutely brilliant. They interviewed him after the game and he basically said he scored a similar goal in preseason. So when he picked it up in that position, he basically, it was almost like muscle memory and he basically did it again. And it was a brilliant goal with his signature, with his signature celebration. Cold. <laughs> his cold celebration. Um, who am I not spoken about? Amrabat. Amrabat needs to get the ball more, man. I, I know I've spoken about Amrabat, but you see him sitting in that pocket in the midfield. And you see Maguire get the ball. You see Lindelof get the ball. You see, who else is it? Like Deloitte, um, Evans get the ball. And they just don't play the ball into Amrabat. It's extremely, extremely frustrating to watch. Because he's there... Um, and you must just play it through the lines and he can he can take the ball and he can pass it back. I mean, I just think if we're going to play the ball into Amrabat, we're going to start pulling teams. And this is a big problem. We're going to start, as soon as we start pulling teams, 
higher up the pitch. You know, we, we pull him out. Even if it's one play, we pull him out. Amrabat, he's good at holding the ball. Um, he can turn. He can maybe play our wingers because then we can just start pulling players out of position. And a big issue with today's game was our passing was too passive. Our passing was too slow. And against teams, especially teams that's at the bottom of the table, especially if it's going to be one all. And they're going to sit in. I get what we're trying to do in, uh, especially in the transition stages, putting players one on one. But as soon as they're back in the shape, we need to pass the ball quickly. I mean, if you look at the first goal, Rashford gets the ball. I think it was Rashford, man. I'm pretty sure it was Rashford. Rashford gets the ball. Um, he gets inside. He plays Bruno. Bruno plays one touch um, through to Scott McTominay. And, you know, we, we're pulling players apart. And Eric Ten Hag really needs to work more on this. As soon as he works more on it, I think we'll start scoring way more goals. And I think also um, even Rasmus can be in that in that position where it doesn't need to be crosses. It can be passes into him in the box, you know, from Bruno, from Mount. I, I honestly was hoping that Mount was going to get more game today. Um, however, he, he got very little, but Mount is so tidy with the ball, guys. I don't know what you guys think. But I think when Mount plays, he's so tidy with the ball. He carries the ball up the field. He he also, to a certain de degree, um, just like uh, Ganacho when he came onto the field, he, he he dictates the tempo of the game. He's a player that... He, he's, he's not a player that's going to sit like Eriksen. He's a player that, that's going to gonna move forward. But the manner in which he moves forward, he, detect, he dictates the tempo of the game. And I also think Ganacho came on and... With his hard work and, and his, his willingness to run at the opposition. He, he also kind of dictated um, the game. Uh, who haven't I spoken about? I've spoken about Anthony, Martial. Again, Martial and Rasmus. That, that strike position, man. That's, that's a graveyard shift. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a thankless task to be striker for Manchester United. And Eric Tenag needs to sort it out. I don't think Martial or Willian had a bad game. I just think they had bad service, you know. Um, so hopefully, moving forward, um, hopefully we'll see we'll see our strikers getting both of them getting on the score sheet because I think the way things are going, um, I don't think uh, Rasmus is always going to be taken off, but I think Martial is going to be getting at least half an hour every game, and he might even be getting cup games, starting cup games. So I think Martial is going to get a lot of games this season. Um, and Marshall's very good at holding the ball, and Eric Ten Hag really does like players that can hold the ball. I mean, it's been how many games in a row? I think three or four games in a row now, where he's brought on Eriksen's second half. And as soon as he brings Eriksen on second half, I mean, that, that combination in the midfield of Eriksen and uh, Amrabat, they just, they both now to keep the ball. And they both know how to dictate the tempo of the game to a certain degree. I just think our passing, even with Ericsson on the field, our passing needs to be quicker. I think sometimes, um, I understand it's a coaching um, issue. I'm going to call it a coaching issue where uh, we have basically four players uh, tight against the back four. But sometimes somebody needs to drop in. Even if you drop in, pass the ball possible back and you back on your man i mean just to just to create some movement you know just to make sure that that you we always move in the ball but we we are stagnant you see rashford standing on the ball um you see Maguire kind of standing on the ball you see evan standing on the ball so i just i, I would like to see a faster um passing passing game and i do think when we get it right, I do think we're going to get it right. And when we do get it right, I do think we're going to be scoring more goals. Um, who haven't I spoken about, man? I think I've spoken about everyone. Evans had a good game. Evans and Maguire had a good game. Um, I do think Maguire has... It's, it's difficult to say we had a better game. I mean... Maguire's passes from the back today was was he was finding his man all the time. So I think Maguire just edges it. But in terms of that central defensive pair, I mean they know each other. They used to play for for, for Leicester together. So I don't think there's too much issues there. Um, if you see this season, we 
um, I saw a stat earlier um, that we were playing three meters higher up the field, and especially in the in the latter parts of the of the first half, you saw last season we were we were like kind of on the halfway line, um, just behind the D. You saw that's where our centre backs was, and this season, um, especially in the latter in the latter stages of that first half, you saw that we were on the side of the D, almost like out the D. Um, and that is, I think it's, that's more than, if you're looking at that, I wonder how big the D is. I think that the D is, let's say the D is like five meters. I think that we're more than three meters. I think that's like four meters advanced in comparison to where our defensive line was last season. And it's quite crazy because we don't have fast center backs. I remember in the Oliver and the Soul Show, um, we always used to say, we need fast center backs, we need fast center backs. But we have Maguire and Evans playing at centre back and we play in the highest line. We play, I don't even know if I see Liverpool playing such a high line. We are playing the highest, highest line, man. Um, yeah, I'm just happy with the three points, man. I'm just super happy with the three points with a brilliant goal from Deloitte, obviously. Um, and again, the pass coming from the left-hand side. That time as well, it was Ganacho finding Deloitte. And I just think we need to up the tempo, guys. I just think we need to up the tempo. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, guys. Um, I really appreciate every single one of you that, that watches these videos. I'm really pushing to get this channel going. Um, and I'm just, you know, never, never, never going to give in. <laughs> I was trying to think of like, I was trying to think of like a cool thing to say, but yeah. Never gonna give you up, never gonna let you down. <laughs> anyway guys, um, I'll see you in the next one man, peace.